Hello everyone, thank you for coming to check out this video. I'm making this video because as of today, February 5th, Cisco released five advisories about vulnerabilities that exist within CDP. Now for all of us that have been working with Cisco for a while now, we know that CDP is baked into almost every Cisco product, which makes this vulnerability very widespread. What's also important about this vulnerability is that it could be used to remotely execute commands, which again is a very significant characteristic of this vulnerability. Also, this vulnerability can be leveraged to force devices to reload, essentially being a denial of service attack. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the details of the vulnerabilities, but what I will do is I'll just quickly glance over the five advisories I'll take a look at the advisory from the CERT Coordination Center, and we'll also look at some documentation from the people who actually found this vulnerability. And I'll also go back and take a look at some of the details of just one of the advisories, since all of the five Cisco advisories follow the same format. Now, if you want to get the actual details, I'm going to put links to everything below in the description. So all of the text that you see behind me right now is text that's going to be entered into the description of this YouTube video. First, let's quickly take a look at the five advisories released. The first one is for the NXOS software, which this is the advisory we'll review in more detail later. Next on our list addresses the FXOS, the iOS XR, and the NXOS software. We also have an advisory for Cisco IP phones, as well as Cisco Video Surveillance 8000 series IP cameras. And last but not least, we have an advisory for the Cisco iOS XR software. Now again, I will only be reviewing the NXOS software advisory, but for all the details, you can find the links in the description of this video. Moving on, we have the advisory which the CERT Coordination Center released. This covers some of the CVEs, the impact, and the solution. However, the Cisco advisories are what people should reference for the details. If you would like to know more about the people who found this vulnerability, reference the links provided in the description for our missed sites. One of the documents is for the general overview, and the other is their technical white paper about the CPON vulnerability. At this point, let's dive into reviewing the advisory about the NXOS software. Now remember, all of the advisories follow the same format, However, some of the product specific details are different. Be sure to review them all so that you're informed about these minute differences. The first thing I'll point out is how to see all of the bugs attached to each advisory. Simply click more in this section and they will be displayed. Here in the summary, we see that this could allow an unauthenticated adjacent attacker to execute some arbitrary code or cause the device to reload and that the vulnerability exists because the CDP parser does not properly validate input for certain fields in a CDP message. Furthermore, a successful exploit could allow the attacker to cause a stack overflow, which this is where the attacker could execute arbitrary code with administrative pr privileges on an affected device. Also in the summary section, we see a very important note which states that since CDP is a layer two protocol, an attacker must be in the same broadcast domain as the affected device while specifically calling out layer two adjacent. Now this essentially means that someone will likely need to be in your environment if they perform these attacks. The folks over at Armis claim some non Cisco devices could allow access to the internal network via the internet. Then an attacker could launch a CPON attack using the network access they obtained through the other products. The last thing to make note of here in the summary is that Cisco has already released software updates that address this vulnerability and it says that there are no workarounds for this particular vulnerability. However, there is a way to close the security vector and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Each release note lists the affected products and it also lists means for determining the status of CDP. Here we see this, how to determine it for an XOS and they even give you an example down here. And next we see how to check it for the UCS fabric interconnects. And we see the example for that as well right here. 
A little further down in the document, we're provided with a list of products that are confirmed to not be affected by this particular vulnerability. And then as we move along, we reach the section that talks about workarounds, and it states that there are no workarounds to address this vulnerability. However, customers that don't make use of the CDP protocol, they can disable it on either the global level or on an individual interface level if they want to just reduce the attack surface. Disabling it globally closes the attack vector. Doing it on the interface level just reduces the attack surface. Next, we're provided with an example for how to disable CDP globally and also how to disable it at the interface level for the Nexus switches that are running Cisco NXOS software. Next, they show us how to disable CDP on the UCS Fabric Interconnects. And we're moving on. We see that there are there is fixed software for this particular vulnerability. And also that customers without service contracts, as well as customers who are having difficulty obtaining the fixed software, they should contact Cisco Technical Assistance Center. And the final three things that I would like to point out from this advisory is that they give us installation instructions and they also make it clear that Cisco PCERT is not aware of any malicious use of the vulnerability. And lastly, Cisco thanks the people who actually identified this vulnerability and reported it. I hope this video was of value to you. And as always, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.